Well, friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I realize that right now I am in Chicago bear country, but you know, uh, <clears throat> growing up in the state of Michigan, I, I, I had this experience that, that w- when you heard Detroit Lions and Super Bowl in the same sentence, you usually also heard phrases like the apocalypse and the return of Christ. And last week, the Lions, the Detroit Lions, were within three points of going to the Super Bowl and me preaching about the end of the world today. (laughs) I couldn't believe it. It was something that, that just didn't seem like it was supposed to happen. It felt like a dream. The Lions being serious contenders for the Super Bowl, and then the second half of that playoff game happened and, and everything returned to normal. <laughs> and of course, as they were on their way to winning that playoff game, they were about to go to the Super Bowl, and instead, the Lions did maybe the most authentic Lions thing ever. They got you to invest. They got you to care. They got you to hope. And think maybe, just maybe, this is a brand new Super Bowl going, Super Bowl winning football team. And then they snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory. You know, there, there's, a, there's a mantra in Michigan, same old lions. You know, Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we heard this a, f- a few moments ago, he says, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Now, now, maybe it's not just the same old lions, and, 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 and maybe they are a, a better version of what they, they had always been and what I had always known them to be. And, and even if they had gone all the way to the Super Bowl and even won, guess what, friends? The Super Bowl might be glorious, but it's still a perishable wreath. Disciples of Jesus look forward to an imperishable victory. You and I, we look forward to the return of Christ to this earth and bringing all of heaven with him. And when we are there, there will be no more sin, no more same old sin and no more same old death. Jesus will reunite all things in heaven and on earth, and he will reunite all the dead with their bodies, and he will renew all things. You know what the Bible calls that? The new creation. Heaven and earth will become one And the earth will be as it should be with abundant beauty and hospitality and and eternal life and everlasting peace. Darkness and death and calamity, they all go away. And God will take our same bodies, the ones that you and I have right now and that those same bodies that might have been hard to drag out of bed this morning, he will take that same body and he will raise it up to be like his to be beautiful and strong and immune to pain and disease and hunger and he will renew our mind and our soul so that we will no more be capable of sadness or longing or anger or sin and friends that's why the apostle paul calls christians also new creations so that not only will we live in the new creation but you and i we ourselves will be new creations we will live 
forever in heaven and on earth as heavenly people on earth. Friends, that is the imperishable prize that we look forward to. Jesus will make all things as they should be, including us. It's the new, authentic you. You know, our culture really likes that word, right? Authentic. It's kind of like one of those buzzwords, and you, you see it around everywhere. And I think that what our world means when they, when they use that word authentic is, is being true to who you really are. And if you are being inauthentic, you are seen as fake, as pretending. But being authentic means that, well, at least according to our world, that I have to discover my true identity, who I am on the inside, and the world must celebrate who I am. And that means that I must be able to indulge in worldly identities and treasures to be who I want to be. But brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus preaches a message that would offend our world today. The gospel is offensive because what Jesus preaches is that who you are is not who you are supposed to be. Because the truth is, who we are naturally is not who we really should be or who God intended us to be. The truth is that you and I, we are sinful mutations of ourselves. In fact, if you want to discover your true, authentic self, you actually have to be less like yourself and more like Another. Jesus is coming to restore us to who we are really supposed to be. That's the gospel. And who we are really supposed to be is like Jesus. You know, in that new creation, you and I will be who we were made to be for eternity. And we will no longer have sin or sickness corrupting our bodies, our minds, and our souls. We will be our actual, authentic selves because we were made to be like Christ. You know, maybe the Lions, the Detroit Lions, will will never make the Super Bowl. And they will always be the same old Lions. But as, as someone who has received new life in baptism, you can't, you can't settle for being the same old you and just call it being authentic. And friends, I get it, because that same old you comes really naturally. It is really easy to be the same old you. But you can't be that person. Because that person is a sinner. And when you are being that person, that means that you have addictions and you have tempers, you have unholy desires and you have temptations. You have regrets and you have resentment and you have jealousy and you have lust. And there's a mutated version of who you are 
who roars devilish things in your mind, and there's an appetite for sin in our souls that is insatiable. And friends, that is what makes the world's idea of being authentic so dangerous. Who we are naturally is completely corrupt, completely opposed to Christ and enemies of God and his creation. No, the message of the gospel is this. God knows who you really are and he offers to change it. See, that's the nature of the gospel. The nature of the gospel is that it changes our lives. That's why Jesus came healing the sick and making the deaf hear and the blind see and the lame walk. That's why he came raising the dead. He is the bringer of the new creation. Jesus sees who we are, and he sees that we cannot stay that way. And so he makes us new. And friends, what is only natural to sinners is no longer allowed in the kingdom of Jesus. And so he forgives sins. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He promises us eternal life. Friend, on the cross... Jesus ends sin's power to mutate us. And by rising from the dead on Easter, Jesus begins a new era for humanity. And when we rise from the dead to be like Jesus, who we will be is truly like him. But the good news is that we are not just waiting until Jesus comes back to be like him. If you've been baptized, you already have eternal life like him. You've already received the Holy Spirit like him. And if you've been baptized, you have already been called a saint and a citizen of heaven. If you've been baptized, you are already like Jesus. And it's for that reason that there's no looking back at our life before Christ. And there's certainly no turning back to our life that we had before Christ. Because when you have Jesus, and when you were like Jesus, that means that we must keep our eyes on the imperishable prize. And friends, I get that that is hard because you are still a sinner. We're saints and we're sinners. Welcome to discipleship. Sinners who are also called saints, trying to live like saints. And sometimes when you are a disciple of Jesus, sometimes your life as a disciple looks like the 2023 Detroit Lions winning 14 games and missing the Super Bowl by just three measly points. But you should probably throw that next graphic on there because sometimes you look like the 2008 Detroit Lions who had a historic 0-16 season. But friends... No matter how well we win or how badly we lose at discipleship, 
Christians always remember who they are in Christ and the victory that awaits us. And when our opponent, Satan, throws nasty trick plays at us, well, Christians just consider that part of the race, part of the training, part of the holy challenge to live more like Christ. And we don't settle for being the same old version of ourselves. We strive to be our new, authentic selves in Jesus. See, to live authentically in Christ, you can't be the same old you. The gospel means that there is an old you and there's a new you. And Jesus preaches a new way, a new life, a new identity. And, and you become more like your new, authentic self by imitating Christ. And you know what Christ did? Christ died to himself to live for others. He left heaven to be like us, to win us for himself so that we might be like him. You know, Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. And dear Christian, you and I are called to do the same. To die to self-interest, to die to our own ways of life, to die even to our rights, die to being who we want to be, die to the identities that you and I have made for ourselves, and we are called to be a different people who make different choices and have different priorities, and, and so that we might live like Christ, and so others might find who they truly are in Christ. Maybe, just maybe, the Lions will make a Super Bowl run next year. Or maybe they will be the same old, authentic Detroit Lions. But either way, friends, Jesus is coming. He's making all things new. And the victory is already ours. And we can never be the same old versions of ourselves because we will never be the same. The new, authentic you is only found in Jesus. In his name. Amen.